fade in full. We are back. Yo, what's good? Man, looking crazy. I'm rough. Well, guess what, man? Today is one of the best days ever because it's my 40th birthday and I'm in a beautiful country of Morocco, the amazing city of Marrakesh. Wish a happy birthday. Hit the thumbs up, leave a comment because it is indeed my birthday. Big 4-0 in Morocco. I have these letters, a speaking engagement I did at Harkness Center. And whenever you got a situation where you feel like you don't know, ask somebody. With Miss R and uh, the students, they're amazing. They're great, they're incredible barbers. We um, learned a lot from each other during the time that I spoke. And they wrote me some letters, so I wanna share some of the letters with you. While we got time right here on the roof, rooftop, man. During the day, I'm gonna go to a Moroccan barber shop. So, we'll see what they can do. It's tough with the language barrier. I don't know how to really speak. Letter time. So, let's see. Uh, this one is from Elias. So, dear Valid from Fade and Foot, thank you for coming, to, coming into us and talking to us. I learned a lot from you. Thanks for answering all my questions. I know I had a lot. The thing that really got me is when you said you don't run your shop on roof rent and the way you explained it made it so much sense and it really made makes your shop a real business. One thing I'm going to try to be is someone who knows what is going on with your shop at all times because of commission. For real though, thanks for coming in and talk to us because I had so many questions. One question I did have was, do you know any way I can grow clientele as a solo barber? The same thing that you do as a barber in a barber shop, actually, you should you should practice these things no matter if you're in a shop or you're alone. So definitely get your card, get a QR code on your card, have that QR code go directly to a booking link, um, start a referral program for your customers. If you're a solo barber, I'd say get a Google page and get some reviews. So you need, you actually need all of the things that a shop needs. You need a landing page for people to book besides, um, you know, just Instagram and, and Facebook. Have a link there where people can book, track your stats, keep their info. You know, that's your list. Whenever it's slow, whenever you're doing a special, whenever you're doing anything where you like going out of town or whatever, you need these people to know, you can use your list. You can use their emails. You can use their uh, phone numbers. Once you have a set a, go set a goal for how many people you really want, and then keep those people in rotation. So if you need like 50 solid clients, keep them in rotation, hold on to them. And once you get to a point where you have, like you reach that goal, you, you can't take any more people. So then it's time to raise your price, which we talked about. So you, being that you're alone, there's only so much you can do. There's only so much hair that you can cut. When you get to a point where you wanna make more money, the only thing you can do is charge more charge them more, find more people, or sell them something else. Those are the only ways that you can go. But you asked me about building clientele. So actually building the clientele. I think I talked a lot about more, more so if you got them. So building the clientele. Um, some people use the strategy of giving like a 30% off for the first time. Um, definitely, definitely for the people that you do have, the five, six, 10, or whatever, make sure you have pictures. Make sure you build a portfolio of work that they can see from you. They need to be able to, to trust you. Um, referrals, those people need to bring referrals. Cards, posters, cards, posters, flyers, posts, um, ads. You can do ads on um, social media. Let's get creative, man. What is the most creative thing Elias can do? Um, so a young guy, um, Young, handsome man, there's a lot of things that you can do. I'd say code approach people. Go somewhere where your target client is and code approach people, man. Tell them who you are, introduce yourself. This is sales. You gotta get people to know who you are, man. You know, get a, get a shirt that says, you know, something cool about what you do on it or a picture of you cutting on the shirt. I mean, we can go on and on for days. There's, I hope that, this may spark the idea or, or set you in your direction for building clientele as a solo barber. For me, when I was solo in the basement and in the, in the kitchen, I cut hair on the porch so everybody could see. Everybody in the neighborhood could see. So that was one of the things that I did. 
Um, back to the letter. You inspire me to hustle on my own shops and be an entrepreneur like you. You're a really good teacher as well. Thank you very much. I'm working on that. I could tell you love teaching people skills and stuff about the profession. I'm always looking to learn more and would like to learn from you if you're okay with that. Yes, I am okay with that. My number is boop, 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 boop. I'm gonna give away your number. And my Insta is Eli So Wavy. So if you wanna follow Elias, uh, his Instagram is at E L Y E L I dot S O Wavy with two B two Y's at the end. If you have any classes I can attend or opportunities, let me know. From Elias Torres, student Barbara Harkness. Yo, thank you for the letter, Elias. I appreciate you so much, man. And you actually taught me something while we were there. I hope that we get to work together in the future. <clears throat> uh, this one's from Cold Cuts. Thank you, V, for the free information that I'm going to take and use. I wish you well, opening up more shops and staying blessed. Hope to see you at the top soon. Appreciate the talking tips for when I open my own shop, stay out of trouble and stay focused. Yes, yes, yes. Cold Cuts, I appreciate you. When I went to your class, <clears throat> I was in the process of acquiring a barbershop. That thing went south. I'll share that in another video. But there's definitely a lot to learn from that story whenever I share it, man. I wish you the best of success, man. Keep going, don't stop. All right, I don't know who this is from, but uh, I'm gonna read it anyway. And this probably be it. I probably have to break this up because we got letters for days. So, uh, hi Valid. This is what I learned. A lot of things from you yesterday. I learned that you started cutting hair at the age of 16 in your basement. Started cutting hair because you got messed up haircut and wanted to start making money. I did. The first topic that got my attention is the prison fight. This is what we remember from Talk. Okay, how someone didn't pay him after a cut, so he fought him and the other inmates remind him he need to make the right choices. So he continued cutting the inmates' hair. He was only getting paid 15 cents. This experience made him turn his life around. <laughs> Second, he talked about how to pick, pick the right location and don't pick a shop with wrong people. He also said don't get involved with people that you are, don't get involved with people that you are working with. Okay, I think I have to see where you're going with that. Don't attract the wrong mind of business. Don't attract the wrong mind your business. I think that's what you meant with that. You don't want to get in trouble like he did. Good business means more money. Another topic that he learned how to cut from other barbers, true. He talked about how to build clients through social media. He talked about how clients are someone who rebooks with you and customers only visit one time. He talked about how much money barbers like Barbers make, like beginner barbers, make 50-50. Goes to the barber, the other goes to the shop. Master barber, 60-40. Goes to the barber and the rest goes to the barber shop. And senior barber, 70% goes to the barber and the other goes to the shop. Last thing was make sure to pay your taxes, report your income in order to obtain credit loans post financial status. Yes, yes, yes. Who wrote this letter? Because this, you, you unpacked a lot right here. I want to know who wrote this one. <clears throat> Yeah, and I can't believe you like brought up the fight, man. That's like a pivotal moment in my journey right there. I talk about that a little bit on this channel because it was a crazy time and it definitely was a memorable, memorable memory. But um, I'm glad that you got something from that. Make sure you get paid. Make sure you report your taxes. Uh, make sure you choose a shop that has the people, places, and things that fuel your growth. You got a lot of good things from that. And I got a lot of good things from you from you all too about um, where the barber game is going, um, how you all are coming up in the world of social media and the information age. And also utilizing the the um, school and the class, you know, that that is something we didn't have in my time. So um, you are gonna be a lot more dangerous when you get to my age. You know, I'm able to like, you know, visit places like Morocco and all of that stuff, like, you know, go to South Asia, all from being a barber, you know what I mean? Being a barber led me to um, learning marketing, learning sales, learning financial literacy, and also taking a chance, taking a leap of faith. One common thing with everybody that works at Faith and Fuzz, we all took a leap of faith. We all believed in something that we wanted to do. 
we went through the steps that we had to go through to do it and then got to you know where we got to the shop together but it's not that's not the end of it it's not just about us making it there and then that's it you know we all got to go to the next level together and i hope that we all can work with you in the future sometime once you're done with barber school or even if you're not done with barber school and you ever want to just pull up and learn pull up and see what it is that we do on a day to day you know we want to keep you within our cipher, within our circumference. And I look forward to coming back to the Harkness Center to holla at y'all real quick when I get back, when I when I get back to the States, you know what I mean? I'm getting up there, man. You know, you learn a lot from this old man. So I'm gonna holla at y'all on the next one, man. It's V from Fade Up Club. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one, all right? Peace.